Hey folks, Quillyteen here, and welcome to a guide to Kerbal Space Program for complete beginners. I've done a lot of Let's Play series for KSP, but I haven't done a just a simple, just very basic tutorial before, and I've had a lot of people request something like that. So the goal of this series of videos is going to be a really sort of in-depth, step-by-step explanation of how to play Kerbal Space Program. We're going to get you to at least the point where you can get into orbit around the planet. Now, Kerbal does have some quite excellent uh, tutorials built into the game here in training, and they will teach you a fair amount of stuff. But, um, you know, some people learn better in different ways, and maybe the training scenarios weren't uh, ideal for you. So that's what we're going to be looking at over here. I am running on version 1.3. If you are playing on a future version, almost certainly everything we're going to talk about here will still apply. I'm going to be playing with no mods for this tutorial. There are a few that we can definitely recommend. I've got a video online already for recommendations, but perhaps I'll do another updated version of that at the end of this tutorial series over here. And at the end of this tutorial series, if you want to know more, I would definitely recommend that you follow along with some actual Let's Plays, which won't be quite as detailed, but will get a lot more stuff done a lot faster. So let's go ahead and start new. Your very first thing you're, you're going to do when you start the new game is you're going to have to give a name to your save. It can be literally anything here. So we're just going to call this one, I don't know, I'll call this one, wow, typing is hard, guide over here. There are three game modes over here. We're going to be playing in career, in which you have to manage both your funds and your science to get ahead. Um, it is the most complete version, and it's quite a lot of fun. And the thing is, it actually does a pretty good job of sort of building up the resources that you have over time so that you start off very simple and add complexity going forward. On the flip side is sandbox mode, which starts you off with absolutely everything unlocked. Um, you don't have to worry about money, you don't have to worry about science, but it can be quite confusing because you've got so many parts to play with. I also really like the idea of sort of building your way up. Science is kind of in the middle where you don't have to worry about money, but you do have to collect science. So we're going to be starting in career uh, right over here, if I can click it. The flag over here, you can choose whatever you like. To, that looks right. We'll just stay, keep the uh, the default flag in here for, for this particular tutorial. You can also choose your difficulty options over here. I'm going to leave it on normal, which is perfectly fine. You've got four preset difficulties over here. You've also got the ability to tune individual sliders if you want something custom. There's also the advanced tab over here. So there's a lot of ability to make some changes. One of the things to note about normal difficulty is you see this option over here, missing crews respawn. That means that there is going to be a certain series of, of Kerbals, your actual astronauts, that if they quote unquote die on the mission, they don't really die. They just go missing for a little while and then they'll come back later on. So it means it's a lot less punishing if something goes terribly wrong. And we'll take advantage of that in our tutorial. Anyway, with that, I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. So we're just going to wait for a moment to load. And I mean, uh, there'll be a few pop-ups here like this. Gene Kerman says hi to us over here. How's it going? Gives you a few introductions to some controls. We're going to say thanks, I've got it. The basic controls that work on most screens, if you hold down the right mouse button, you can rotate your view around. If you use your middle mouse wheel to scroll in and out, you can do that. Uh, we can use the arrow keys here to move our camera a little bit. This doesn't come up quite as often. Now, what you're looking at here is the Kerbal Space Center. This is where you're going to research, build, and launch all of your spaceships from. There are a series of different buildings over here that you can interact with that do different things. Now, it can be somehow sometimes hard to know what they all are, like to spot them all. For example, the very important mission control over here can sometimes kind of be hard to see back there. Now, over on the left-hand side of the screen, though, there is a button linked to every single one of these buildings. So it's well worth just mousing over these until you, you kind of got a good idea of what you're looking for over here. They all do a variety of things. Some are far less important than others. For example, the administration building over here, there's a definite chance that you might not interact with it at all. It lets you set certain policies to let you exchange money for more science and vice versa and play with reputation. They're basically three resources that you have at your disposal. Reputation is not really something you're going to think about at all. Uh, the big resources are going to be so uh, money and especially science over here. So there's a, there's a few things. We're going to go through these. We're going to find see them organically as they come up. I will tell you this, for your very first start, what you're going to want to do right away is you're going to want to click on Mission Control, which is this building over here, or you can just click on it from right over here. The reason Mission Control is so important is because Mission Control is what gives you your, well, your missions, your contracts for jobs. Now, you don't have to actively pursue contracts. These are, in a sense, optional, but the reason you're going to want to do them is because 
these missions will give you money. And it is really the only significant way to make money in Kerbal Space Program. So while you're not truly forced to do contracts, really you're going to want to do them just to raise funds. The funds will be used to build your spaceships and more importantly, to upgrade your space center. Your space center starts with a bunch of like just level one buildings, but to do bigger, fancier stuff, you're going to have to upgrade them to bigger buildings and that takes a lot of money. The really nice thing about contracts though is that they really give you context for what you're going to want to do. At the start of the game, you're going to have these four contracts to choose from. And these are really sort of like the base story, the base development, the main kind of campaign of Kerbal Space Program. It gives you an order that makes sense that you might want to do things in. And certainly it makes a lot of sense for us to grab those now. So uh, we currently can have a maximum of two contracts in play at the start of the game. We'll be able to get more later on as we upgrade mission control. So we're going to pick a couple. The star rating here sort of kind of indic indicates difficulty. As we'll see later on, it's not really the clearest example. There's going to be things that are one star that are actually quite tricky to do and things that are three star that will um, ultimately become very, very simple and straightforward. Orbiting, cur orbiting Kerbin, Kerbin is our planet, by the way, it's Earth effectively, um, is a big challenge at first, but very quickly stops being a challenge once you, you know, unlock some things and get better at the game. Uh, orbiting Kerbin becomes just as easy as riding a bicycle. So we are going to start at the top though. So this first, very first mission is to gather scientific data from Kerbin. You've got a briefing over here with some backstory and some really funny little text over here if you want to read it. Um, the prestige is linked to the sort of star rating and how much um, reputation you might get from it. Prestige is not a line you have to pay attention to. The expiration, this is the expiration date for when the contract is offered. This contract, once you accept it by hitting the green check mark, it does not have an, a, an expiration date once you accept it. Um, basically, you'll sometimes see a duration as a second value over here. So it'll say expires in five days, duration four years or something like that. That second one is how much time you have to actually complete the contract. The first date here, the expiration, is simply how long you have to you have to accept it. So we actually have no real time pressure for completing this contract, simply for accepting it. Now we're gonna skip down to the bottom over here and see the rewards. So the advance here is how much money you'll get simply for accepting this contract. And then this is the reward for completing the contract. This many Kerbal Bucks, this is your money, a little bit of science, and then a little bit of reputation. Again, reputation you don't have to worry about at all. It's really about the money and the science. But not only that, under objectives, there will be one or more objectives for you to accomplish at part, as part of this contract. And quite frequently, you will get a reward for completing the individual objectives. And that's actually what's happening here. Even though there's only one objective, there is a reward for completing this one objective, which is to recover or transmit any science experiment data from Kerbin, that's our planet, to achieve this goal. So when we complete this step, we're gonna get 6,400 Kerbal Bucks and a science. And then that will of course complete the entire contract, which will get us the completion reward. So truly this contract is going to give us a couple of thousand bucks up front and about 10,000 bucks for completing the whole thing, which is kind of nice at this point. So we're gonna go ahead and accept that because it's very easy to achieve this one. Then we're gonna pick the next contract over here, which is simply to launch our first vessel. It has a very similar structure to the other one. All we have to do to complete this is to launch our first vessel off the launch pad or run right. We just have to, we have to leave the ground. That's it, basically. So we're gonna go ahead and accept that contract as well. And then we're at our maximum, so I can't actually click another button right now, but that's okay. We can check our active contracts here. And if we've completed any contracts, we can check it in the archives. So we're gonna go ahead and leave this facility. Then what we're going to do is we're going to build our very first vessel. And for that, we're going to enter the building that you will probably be spending the most amount of time in. In fact, there's no doubt you will spend the majority of your time that's on the ground will be spent in the vehicle assembly building. And the rest of your time will mostly be spent on the actual mission piloting your ship. So the vehicle assembly building over here is where you actually build a spaceship. We're going to get uh, Werner von Kerman saying hi to us over here. Give us a little bit of an intro. That's good. Most of the things are kind of locked down. Currently, we can't. I'm trying to right click and turn the screen. I can't. I can't zoom in or out. There's nothing to do. These buttons over here don't do anything right now. You can't really do anything on the screen until you've got at least one part down, which is what is happening on the left hand side of the screen. These are all the parts that you have available to you to build your spaceship. They're divided in 
categories. So this is the pods category, which currently only has the Mark 1 command pod. Next would be the fuel tank category, which is currently empty. Next is the engine category, which has one item, and so on and so forth. These will fill up with many, many, many items as you go forward. Some of these categories will have dozens of things in them. Um, that's one of the things, if you do load up sandbox mode, is why I was saying it's a little bit overwhelming, because it will just be crazy full with stuff. For our very first mission, what I want to do, and this is not this is not required, but this is going to be a good way to sort of introduce you to things. We are going to go and go with a single command pod alone for our first mission because it's going to teach us a couple of interesting concepts. First of all, oh, I did mean to point out when you're looking at these parts, many of the parts like down here will be grayed out, and if you click on them, nothing will happen. The game requires you that you start your ship with certain types of components. Usually one of the command pods, although apparently we could also start with just one of these solid boosters as well. This would be allowed. We're gonna start by clicking on the command pod over here, right there. We're just gonna single click on it, and there it is. So this is our command pod. Now that I've got one in here, I can rotate around with the right mouse button. I can scroll with the mouse wheel to go up and down. In this view, the mouse wheel doesn't zoom, although if you hold shift, then mouse wheel, then you can zoom in and out at that point. So there, this is our spaceship over here. This is going to be our entire vessel, just a simple tin can. Now, you may have noticed when we moused over this component, there was a lot of information here. You don't have to worry about reading most of it right now. Uh, it is worth noting you can right click on this to, to sort of pin it down there, oops, um, which will then allow you to say scroll this list. This Mark 1 command pod has a lot of stuff going on. It's a very important component. It's where your Kerbal will live, and you can tell that because it's got a crew capacity of one. I should say this also might be where your Kerbal dies, but let's, let's ignore that for now. It's got a crew capacity of one, so a Kerbal will be sitting inside of this box. Um, it's got a, a weight, it's, it's 0.84 tons, and it's got some other specs and different things. It's also got a cost down here. It costs us 600 Kerbal bucks to, um, to have this component as part of our ship. And in fact, um, if we go and look down here, this is the total cost of our spaceship right now. Our whole vessel cost us 600 bucks. It's only got one part in it, so that makes sense. Down at the bottom here, we can see our total money. So this is really not going to cost us very much. Now that we've got a part here, this button has also lit up this crew button. This allows us to see who's sitting in the Mark 1 command pod. You can change which Kerbal gets assigned to it by moving things around like that. Okay. For this mission, it doesn't matter who we use. Um, there are really there are three different types of Kerbals. There are pilots, scientists, and engineers. We'll look at what they do later on. You can you can mouse over them to find out some information. The engineer does something about resource converter efficiency and drill efficiency. The scientist does something about vessel science return and resetting experiments. We don't know what that means yet. We're going to find out soon. And the pilots allow us to have stability assist and full vessel control without comnet access. What it means is, um, un until you, unless you start doing you know, certain sort of, not cheesy, but kind of min-maxy, kind of working the system kind of things, you really do want a pilot to be while well, piloting your vessel uh, as much as possible. So we're gonna, we're gonna leave Valentine in there. It doesn't matter who we use, other than their class, their type, pilot, engineer, or scientist, all Kerbals are exactly the same exactly the same. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that again when we look at the Astronaut Center. So we're going to click back on build over here and confirm, yeah, I am going to go just with this, which is underkill for this mission. We can do a little bit more on our first go, but that's okay. We'll name the craft. Hey, it's a, it's a tin can. And um, we uh, just made out of paper thin aluminium. You know, just flavor text it. You can give this mission a different flag from your main flag as well. Tell you what, this is going to be engineered by Kerbidine Industries over here, so it's going to have a different flag. It doesn't matter, it's just flavor. And you can save this if you want. It is worth noting that if you do go ahead and launch, the game auto-saves your your latest design. It's always got the one slot that it auto-saves whatever your latest vessel is in. Um, but you could go ahead and hit save. And then later on, if you hit open, you'll be able to see, hey, there's our tin can over here. One part, one stage, 600 bucks. We'll just cancel that. So we've got our little tin can over here. So we're going to go ahead and hit the green button over on the top right corner over here that says launch. And we are going to launch our very first mission. It's not going to do much, but it's going to show us a few very important basics of the game. 
So we're gonna go ahead and mouse in here. Again, you can right click to rotate around and you can mouse wheel to zoom. But here we are, we're sitting on the launch pad. There's the vehicle assembly building where we're just building things. But we are currently running a mission right now. At the top, we can see our current elevation. This is above sea level. We are 67 meters above sea level over here. And actually, if we turn over this way and zoom out, we can actually see the ocean over there. So there's just a little bit of, a, of the hill. We're just slightly above sea level over here. Um, this elevation number is actually from the center point of your vessel as well. So if you have more components here, the number might be slightly different, but that gets us started off. So there's a bunch of other things. Notice whenever I mouse over here, we got a couple other buttons. We can return to the space center and we can recover the vessel over here. We'll be using these buttons very shortly. Over on the top left, we've got certain time. And if we mouse over this, we get this sort of time warp button. We'll look at that later on as well. There's a bunch of other things going on. Down at the bottom right, we can see all the Kerbals that are in this mission. Well, we have one seat and one Kerbal, so there, there's Valentina Kerman. Again, there's a couple more buttons on there that we'll look at in just a moment, actually. At the bottom of the screen, we've got our nav ball. This shows us what our current sort of, well, I don't know if heading is, is the correct term here since we're not actually moving, but where we are pointing right now, okay? the This nav ball represents, it's so the horizon. Um, and the middle dot here is where we're pointing. We're pointing straight up at the sky right now, which is why this is all blue. Over on the bottom left, there's gonna be a few different things here, but notice it's got the roll, yaw, and pitch. This, These are your three controls for turning your ship. And the neat thing is, even though we don't have any engines or anything like this on our current vessel, inside this command module are these things called reaction wheels, basically like big gyroscope type things, which allow this to rotate if we use our controls. And we can do that right now. The controls for rotating your ship are WASD, right? So the air, not the arrow keys, but WASD, as well as Q and E on your keyboard. So if, take a look at the pitch meter over here. I'm just gonna tap W. You see how the pitch changes? And if I tap S, it changes the other way. And if I do A, it's the yaw, and D is yaw on the other way, and Q and E is roll. So we've got those meters, but you're not really gonna be looking at these meters. Mostly you're gonna be looking at the ship. So let's do this again. I'm gonna hit W and I'm gonna hold it a little bit longer here. You see this? It doesn't matter which way the camera is facing because what you're doing is you're, you're, you're pitching in the same direction. You can actually see the movement on the nav ball and everything. If I hold it a little bit longer, we can actually tip our whole vessel over. And then if we say use Q and E here, we can rotate around. Woo, and get quite a lot of speed going on here. Um, let's see if I can tip it back onto oof, its stomach. And then if I use the yaw keys, which are A and D, we can actually, whoop, I'm trying not to go too hard because it's possible that we can get this thing spinning so much that it might smash itself. And, and that's okay. If something goes terribly, terribly wrong, um, if we hit escape, one of the things we can do, well, I mean, first of all, we can save our game. We can load from a save, that's fine. Uh, we can go back to the space center of the tracking station. That wouldn't change. Our mission would still be operational if we hit this. We'll look at that in a second. But two of the things that will be kind of handy for you, or one of the things that will be really handy for you here is revert flight. This will allow you to revert basically back to an autosave that happened when we tr we initially launched, quote unquote, launched our ship, i.e. arrived on the launch pad. So if anything goes terribly wrong, you can always revert back to being on the launch pad, or in fact, revert back to being inside of the vehicle assembly building. The same option will present itself if you crash and explode, but you don't have to revert, you can just keep going anyway. Now, we have a mission here to do science, and we can confirm that if we go over to top right corner, We've got a few little icons over here that do different things. This shows us our current um, money, reputation, and science. Um, the top one shows us alerts, which we'll see in just a moment. This fuel tank here shows us our current resources. On our ship, we have electric charge and monopropellant. We'll be looking at those things later on. And this one here shows us our contracts. We can confirm we have two contracts, gather scientific data from Kerbin, and launch our first vessel. Now, we're not going to be able to launch our first vessel here because, well, we don't have... Um, we don't have an engine. Oh, notice that this thing is stuck open. If you click on one of these buttons, so if you just mouse over and mouse off, it goes away. If you click on one of them, it stickies them and stays open. So we're just gonna go and dismiss that over there. We can run a scientific experiment right now. We are gonna need science so that we can unlock more parts. Making, doing science is one of the most important things you can do in Kerbal Space Programming here. Uh, you get a little tiny bit of science from doing science here on the surface, and you get a lot more science from doing science in space, and even more so if you can land on some other celestial body like the moon or even another planet. So how do we do science? Well, if you right click 
on just about any part in Kerbal Space Program, you're going to get some kind of pop-up window. Now, the Mark 1 command pod here has a lot going on. As such, it has a relatively complex little pop-up menu. We're not going to be dealing with most of these, almost ever, actually. They're very rare that you mess with most of these buttons. Um, but you've got some options, you know, toggle some lights. Hey, look at that. we got a light on. How cool is that? Um, we could rename the vessel and so on and so forth. But we're going to look down at the bottom thing over here which is the crew report. This is one form of science we can do. We can ask Valentina here to fill out a form. From one to five, how would you rate the temperature inside of the, the command pod? From one to five, how comfortable is your chair? And so on and so forth. So we can get her to fill out this little survey so that we can know how good things are going. So that's what happened. When I click crew report, I get this little crew report window that comes up, crew report from launch pad. You record the crew's assessment of the situation. Now, what's kind of interesting, a lot of these experiments are tied to particular locations. This is the crew report that you get from the launch pad. We're going to get the science from this. We're going to get 1.5 science from this science experiment. Not much of an experiment, but it's still there. We we technically can repeat this experiment on the launch pad, but we will no longer get science from it in the future. You can only get science from most experiments one time. However, we can get science from a crew report again if we do it somewhere else. So we did this one from the launch pad. If we were sitting on the grass over there, that would count as something else. If we were floating in the ocean over there, that would count as something else. If we were off the ground, that would count as something else. If we were in space, that's another one, and so on and so forth. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and keep this report. There are three buttons on the screen. The reset experiment just basically tosses it out, so it does nothing. So we're just going to hit the crew report again because we really do want the crew report. The one on the bottom lets us transmit the data. If we had an antenna on this, we would be able to say, I don't know, scan a copy of the form that Valentina filled out and we would be able to email that back to the command center and we would be able to book this science, this 1.5 science, we'd be able to lock it in remotely. However, we don't have an antenna on here, so we cannot do it. However, we can use the third and final option here, keep experiment, which will simply, we're going to fill out the form, we're going to put it under the seat in the command module and just save it there. We can always right click on this and review the report again. This is the existing report. Yep, it's still there, that's great. If we try to run another crew report, we're going to get this thing that says overwrite crew report. You can only have one copy of any one experiment stored in your command module at any given time. Unless they're different from one another. You can store more than one crew report. That's a little fuzzier. We're going to get into that later. Okay, So you can store multiple different experiments in your capsule, but only one unique one in the current setup that it is based on the, the biome that you're in, which is the launch pad. Sorry, that's a little bit more complicated than I wanted to right now. Anyway, we're done. This is going to be our very first, um, our first mission. We got a little bit of science. We are now going to recover the vessel. So we just went and, and we brought it back into the garage over here. And we get so our rewards. First of all, we get some science over here right? So we got our science because we got our crew report from the launch pad. That was worth 1.5 science. We also apparently got some bonus science here. Recovery of a vessel that survived a flight. That's worth five science by itself as well. The first time. Okay. Technically our flight was us rolling around on the launch pad, but don't tell anyone that's going to count as a flight. Um, so we earned 6.5 science. We actually have 8.5 science in total because we also completed our very first mission. We'll look at that in a second. If we hit next, it'll go to the parts tab. We recovered all 600 funds for our mission. We didn't we didn't even get a scratch on our command module. Therefore, we got back all of the money for our mission, which is great. We're going to hit next again. We'll find out that Valentina has earned one experience point. That's not enough for her to level up. She's still a level zero pilot, but hopefully rel relatively soon we'll get her more experience. You get experience for doing different things. Valentina will not get any more experience for doing another mission on, on Kerbin itself. So the only way for her to get more experience again is for her to go into orbit. Um, down at the bottom right corner of the screen, you see this little alert icon? It says three. And if I mouse over it, it shows three little items. This is to let us know that we have completed our contract. And a few other things. You can, we can cycle through these. We find out that we've gotten some milestones have been achieved. We recovered our first crew from a mission. Yep, we totally recovered Valentina. Perfectly fine. We also performed our first experiments at home. So these milestones will give you bonus money and reputation. 
we completed one of the contract objectives, which was to gather scientific data from Kerbin. And furthermore, that completed the contract as well. So we can go ahead and just trash these messages. We don't need them around anymore. They're just going to litter up our alert little box if we left them there. So we've completed our very first contract. We want to follow this up by completing the next contract, which is to actually launch our first ship into, well, just launch it at all, because we haven't actually done the launch yet. That's what we're gonna be doing next time. Next time we'll also be looking at a, another science experiment that we can actually run on our vessel. So hopefully this, the pacing for this video is, is good. If you do want things to go a little bit faster, you can always just watch a Let's Play, but we're gonna try to keep going with a lot of extra detail in here as we launch our very first a, a, a vessel in the next episode. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.